Hello everyone and welcome back to this tutorial series about how to create a 3D game in C++ from scratch. In this 13th video tutorial we will see how to integrate the mouse input device into our input system. In particular we will see how we can manage the mouse movement in order to rotate our cube and the pressure and release of left and right mouse buttons to be able also to change the scale of our 3D object. As always, we will face three main parts requirements, design and implementation of all the necessary things to integrate the mouse input device. So let's start with the requirements. We need a C++ IDE, Visual Studio is recommended, the target platform is Windows, we also need DirectX 11 SDK, and last but not least, a bit of knowledge of C++ programming language is recommended. Now we can start the design part. In the previous tutorial, we have seen what is and how to implement an input system, and we also seen how to integrate an input device like keyboard. Today, instead, we will see how to integrate another important input device, like the mouse. But what are the main mouse input events that we have to handle? There are two main input events. The first one is the movement of mouse cursor, commonly said on mouse move, and depression and release of mouse buttons, commonly said on left or right mouse down and on left or right mouse up. The handle of mouse buttons will be easy, since we can exploit the same procedure that we have used for the keys of the keyboard through the usage of the API function get keyboard states. For mouse movement instead, we will have to use another important API function called get cursor pose that will tell us the current position of the mouse cursor. And in order to check if there is mouse movement, we have to check if the position of mouse cursor of the current rendered frame or the current update method call is different respect to the one of the previous rendered frame or the previous update method call. As last thing, we have to handle the focus of our window so that we will be able to know when to pass the input events to our window and when not. So, when the window will get focus, we will add it as a listener to our input system. Instead, when the window will lose the focus, we will remove it. Very well. Now we can start the class diagram. Today we have to add a new math class called the point in order to manage the position of the mouse cursor and we have to add all the mouse input events methods in the input listener interface class. At the end, our class diagram will be like in this image. Good, now we can start the implementation. As first thing, let's add the point header file in the math filter. In the point header file, let's start to create the point class. Then let's add two public attributes, the X and Y interior coordinates.
And now we can add a constructor with parameters the two coordinates. and the copy constructor. Good! Now we can go to Input Listener and we can start to add the pure virtual method on mouse move. with parameter the delta or variation of the position of mouse cursor. Let's call it delta mouse pose. Let's go to Input System C++ file and there let's go to Update method. In order to get the current mouse position, we have to call the Get Cursor Pose Windows API function. we have to start to check if there is any change to the position of cursor respect to the previous update code. To do this, we need a new attribute that can hold the previous old position of cursor. So let's add a new point attribute and let's call it old mouse pose. At this point, we have to check if the current mouse position is different respect to the one of the previous update call.
If this is the case, well, we have a mouse move event. So we have to notify to all the listeners this particular event. We can take the previous snippet of code used for keyboard and put it here. We have only to change the method to call, in this case on mouse move. As parameter, we have to pass the variation, delta, or also said difference between the current and old mouse position. At this point, we have to ensure that, at the first update call, we check the current mouse position with a valid old mouse position. But to do that, we need another attribute that we can call first time, initialized with true. If it is the first time the update method is called, then let's initialize our old position attribute with the current one. As last thing, before the end of update method call, let's change the old position with the current one, so that at the next update call we have a true and valid old cursor position. So good! Now let's go to app window and let's implement the on mouse move event. Here we will change the rotation of our cube. The rotation along the x-axis will be changed through the variation of y-screen coordinate. Instead, the rotation along y-axis through the x1. Very well, we can already run our project. And here it is. Unfortunately, we have a problem to solve. If we give focus to another window, our input system will continue to send input events to our window, even if it doesn't have focus anymore. To solve this, we have to go to our window class and add two new important events. on focus and on kill focus.
that are called respectively when the window gain and lose focus. To be able to call them, we need only to handle two new cases in the window procedure. The WM set focus, where, as in the other cases, we need only to call the relative event method, in this case on focus. The same thing applied to WM kill focus, where we will call on kill focus. Very well, now let's go to, to App Window and let's implement the onFocus and onKillFocus methods. In the onFocus method, let's call addListener function of input system and let's pass our window. In the on kill focus instead, we will remove it. Good. Now, let's see if it works. And it works. As last thing, let's handle the mouse button's events. So let's go to input listener and let's add all the mouse button events methods. On left and right mouse down and on left and right mouse up. Then, let's go to Input System C++ file and let's go to Update Method. As we have just said in the introduction, we can exploit the Get Keyboard state to handle even the buttons of mouse. We have only to check here if the key code is equal to VKL button, that represents the left button. But there is a problem here. The event needs to be called only one time and not each time the update method is called. So, as we are already done with the on key up, let's check if the previous state of the key is different respect to the current one. If this is the case, then there is the mouse down event.
Obviously, the same things are applied for the right button. And to handle the release of these buttons, we need only to check if the key codes are VK, L and R button. So far, so good. Now we have only to implement these mouse input events in app window. In this case, at the pressure and release of mouse buttons, we will change the scale of our cube. So let's add a new attribute in app window and let's call it scale cube. And let's initialize it with one. Let's substitute it in update quote position at set scale method. As last thing, let's go to our event method and at left mouse down, we will decrease the scale. At left and right mouse up, we will restore the scale to 1. At the right mouse down, we will increase the scale. We are finished. Let's try it out. And that's all for now, folks. Today, we have seen how to integrate the mouse input device into our input system. The next time, we will see how to exploit our input system to create a first-person camera. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Thanks for watching.